I mean, we've known this for a long time and just most recently, almost 20% of the Swedish electorate clearly feels the same way as those in, in many other countries. So what do you need to do differently in order to address this that hasn't been done, frankly? Precisely. Uh, you know, we didn't deliver growth. We have to. For that, multilateral approaches, for that cooperation is indispensable. We didn't deliver enough jobs and then jobs of enough quality. We have to cooperate internationally and we have to apply multilateralism for better solutions and better outcomes. The question of inequalities, that has to be addressed. Inequalities are growing, they're still growing even today. And of course the crisis created a very, very great acceleration in inequalities. And then there's this question of trust. Yes. Now, I, I mentioned that we've lost the faith in presidents, in, in prime ministers. We've lost uh, the, the, the faith in, in ministers, in political parties, etc. And that is causing uh, these government governance, these electoral results, which sometimes are shocking us, but which again are telling us so many people are angry, so many people are frustrated, so many people feel left out, and those are the ones we have to focus on. You're about so this is really interesting because it's it's a common trend, and like he is trying to say that a the reason why people are being left behind there's not enough growth. That's not true because we've had plenty of stock market. Look at any stock market graph. We had plenty of growth, but it's all been going to people that own stocks. And that's what he's not mentioning is that, um, you know, if you're watching this channel, I'm sure you own maybe a thousand, two thousand, maybe a hundred thousand dollars worth of stocks if you're doing well. But you're definitely not in the billionaire class because we have billionaires that have billions of dollars of stock. And a great example of this is Jeff Bezos. And Jeff Bezos' net worth a year ago, two years ago, he, he and Bill Gates were pretty much tied around 80 billion. But because of this crazy amount of growth and obviously Amazon dominating the market, and that's another trend is that we get only one or two or three major uh, global players in every market. So that means all that wealth gets concentrated because it used to be in the 50s, the 40s, the 60s, corporations weren't that powerful. So it was a bunch of small businesses and small businesses, um, you know, if you have 10 business owners, there's a lot more wealth. And, you know, you got 10 CFOs, you got 10 uh, just different positions that, you know, they're supposed to compete. But when it gets all consolidated into one, um, the wealth is going to be concentrated. And that's why Amazon is doing so well. And uh, there's not necessarily anything bad because obviously they are providing a service and they are being innovative, but they are at the same time hiding things. I mean, obviously uh, they claim that they take good care of their employees and they're great, but <laughs> the main net effect is, is that a lot of this wealth that would be maybe contributed to 15 or 20 Jeff Bezos's, it's going to one Jeff Bezos. It's the same with Walmart. I mean, Walmart destroyed a lot of American jobs and small businesses because the wealth is going to basically six people in the Walmart family who didn't even found Walmart. They have more money than half of America. And uh, these are issues because, like I said, if it's merit-based, and like I said, for Bezos, it's completely merit-based, and he, he deserves it. He did create something great. But for the Walton family, uh, that's a problem. And uh, I really do feel like cryptos is kind of a uh, – alternative and uh, unfortunately this financial system it does really it's a winner take all and if you're a big powerful corporation with lots of money to influence government um, you're going to keep extracting wealth and it's going to go to just one or two or three people that control that major corporation instead of maybe 10 or 20 corporations duking it out and spreading out their uh, profits more equally uh, and keeping the market just more competitive because we all know that monopolies are not good and it's not I mean, unfortunately, free markets are awesome, but we had this issue before with monopolies, and usually when we broke up the monopolies, like the railroad monopoly or the AT&T monopoly, uh, a lot of good things happen. And uh, I'm not necessarily for Amazon being broken up, but the lack of competition and the way that they're able to basically just bully people around is an issue. But let me know your thoughts on this, and I will talk to you guys soon.